Number 44. Calculate the equilibrium constant at the temperature given. So then they give us this balance equation, 2SO2 gas plus O2 gas yields 2SO3 gas. And they give us the temperature of 675 degrees Celsius. That's hot. But anyway, we need to find the equilibrium constant. Now, equilibrium constant, remember, is capital K. There's a lot of them, right? There's Ka for acids, Kb for bases, Kc for concentration, Kp for pressure, Kd for disassociation. You kind of get the point. Do we really care which uh, K value this is? No, but I could probably guesstimate that this would be a Kp value because they're all gases and gases have pressures. Kp, pressure. Now, doesn't matter because there's only really one formula that links a equilibrium constant K with the temperature. And that's this formula down here. So let's just pull this up. This is ultimately the, temp the, the formula that we're going to use, right? Capital K, equilibrium constant, equals E, which is the E found on the calculator. And that E button is raised to the negative delta G over R times temperature. So let's start plugging in things that we can. Let's start with the R value. Now, they didn't give us the R value, but that's because it's a constant. It's never going to change. The R value, if we're using energy values, and delta G is Gibbs free energy, so the R value here is 8.314. Units for the R value is joules per mole times Kelvin. So these units will dictate what units are allowed. So for example, the R value says the temperature has to be in Kelvin. But they gave it to us in Celsius. But that's okay, because I could just quickly turn the temperature, right, T, from 675, 675 degrees Celsius, I can convert that into a Kelvin, right? Celsius to Kelvin plus 273. More specifically, you can add 273.15, which is what I'll use just to get a more exact answer. So let's see, 675 plus 273.15. And now we're looking at a temperature of 948.15 Kelvin. Okay. Now we have to find the delta G, right? The Gibbs free energy. So some of you might be saying, okay, I see that it's standard, right? There's a notch value here. So I can go to the back of the textbook, find out the delta Gs for each individual component, products minus reactants, plug it in, solve, and be done with it. But I wish... I wish. The problem is, is that if you use those delta Gs in the back of the textbook, those delta G values are at one temperature, and that's 25 degrees Celsius. We are not at that temperature. We're at 675. So the delta G value is going to change because we jacked up the temperature. So we have to go another route. What's another way that we can find the delta G with that specific temperature? So I look for formulas that have a delta G with the temperature value. And there's this formula, delta G equals my enthalpy, delta H, minus that given temperature times the entropy, the delta S. So for any temperature, whether it's high or low, you can solve for the new delta G. But the problem is, is that we don't know what the delta H for the whole uh, balanced equation is, and we don't know what the delta S for the whole balanced equation is. Well, that's why I have these values here. I went in the back of the textbook to find out the delta H values for each substance and the S value for each substance, because we have to use those values to find out the overall delta H and the overall delta S to plug it into this formula. So let's get started. Let's start with delta H, the enthalpy. The formula that we're going to use to find the whole delta H for the whole entire reaction is this, right? Delta H for the whole entire reaction is, and maybe I'll bring this down a little bit, is equal to the sum, right? This just means sum. So you're adding up all of your delta H products minus the sum of all your delta H reactants. But now the question is, are these values going to be similar or are they not similar, but the same or different? Well, it goes by the balanced equation. There was two SO2s, one O2, and two SO3s. For all the values that you found in the back of the textbook, you have to multiply it by the coefficients, because those are how many moles you have. So I'll take the negative 
times it by two. I'll take the zero and times it by one because I only had 102, and I'll take the negative 395.72 times it by two because that's how many SO3s I had. Now you have to sum them up. So the formula says SO2 plus O2. So just add these two values together. You don't have to add the products because there's only one product, right? Just one substance, SO3. So let's figure it out. For the reactants, I'll take the 2 times negative 296.83. And that's going to be the sum for the reactant side because plus 0 is just the same number. So negative 593.66. Now let's do the products. 2 times a negative 395.72. So I get negative 791.44. We have the total for the reactants, the total for the product, so now we can plug it in. Delta H for the whole entire reaction, Rxn is reaction, is the products, negative 791.44 minus the reactants, which was negative 593.06. Okay, delta H for the whole entire reaction equals, I love the TI-84 because I could just go up and input the numbers. So this minus that value leaves less room for error. Press enter, and there you go. Negative 197.78 units. In the back of the textbook, it's kilojoule per mole, but since I multiplied each by my coefficients, those are your mole values. So the mole goes bye-bye. So this is just kilojoules. So that's the overall delta H for this reaction. It's going to be exothermic. It's a negative. Now we have to do the same for the entropy. So we could take the same formula, which is this one, and instead of saying delta H's, I can just say that we're now solving for delta S's. So I can say that delta S for the whole reaction would be the sum of the S products minus the sum of the S reactants. So I got to go over to my S values. I take them all and I multiply them by the coefficients. So this would be multiplied by 2, by 1, and by 2. Sum them up. So I have two reactants, so I have to add them. And then this would just get multiplied. So let's see. 2 times, I'm doing the reactants, 248.2 plus 205.2. So the total for the reactant side is 701.6. Now let's do it for the products. 2 times, whoop, no, I don't want that. Let's see. There we go. 2 times 256.76. And I get 5... 13.52, I'm going to take those values and plug them in. Delta S for the whole entire reaction equals the sum of the products, which was the 513.52 minus the 701.6. Okay, delta S now for the whole entire reaction is this value minus the 701, so I'm just going to grab it. Press enter, negative 188.08. Now units for delta S, joules per mole times Kelvin, but we multiplied by the moles, so the moles go bye-bye. So it's just joule per Kelvin. Okay, so now we have the H, we have the S. The temperature was the 675 degrees Celsius, which is 948.5 degrees Kelvin, so we have that. Now let's solve for the delta G. So I'm going to pull this formula over here, get rid of this, and now let's see, delta G equals, now hold on, because delta H is in kilojoules, delta S is in joules. Oh boy, they have to be the same unit of energy. Which one should we convert to? We'll ultimately look at what your formula that you're going to use next, right? The R value said that the energy value needed to be in joules, just J. So that means that the delta G has to be in joules. So the easiest method is to just convert the kilojoules into joules. Times by 1,000. Similarly, take the decimal, move it over to the right three times. 
So this would be a negative 19778 with one zero. So negative 197, 780 joules. And that's the value that's going in now here. Negative 197780 minus the temperature value in Kelvin, 948.15 times by the delta S value, which was negative 188.08. Plug this all into the calculator at once. So I got negative 197.780 minus 948.15 times I'm just going to take that delta S value, and there we go. It's spontaneous, negative 19,451.948. Notice how I'm not uh, rounding, because this is not the answer yet. So I only round at the final answer. So delta G would be this, and that's the number that goes up here. So negative 19,451.948. Now I have all my variables. Let's solve. K equals E raised to the negative fraction. The delta G was the negative, 19,451.948. And then I have my two values on the bottom, right? I have the 8.314. And then I have my temperature, which is 948.15. Now, what I would do is I would simplify this first, right? Just so that you could take the E value and raise it to one number. So let's see. K equals E raised to the a negative times a negative is a positive. So we could just input this as a positive. But I can just go over to the calculator. I could say negative then grab this number. Negative times a negative is a positive. Divided by 8.314, and since I am not using parentheses, and I want to tell the calculator that I want that 948 in the denominator, I'm going to press divide again, 948.15. Enter. Okay, we get a long decimal, 2.4676 with more numbers. I'm going to use all of them because we're not rounding until the end. So E, second LN, that's where you'll find the E button. Grab the whole number and then press enter. I guess four sig figs here. So 11, 11.79. And that is the final answer. No units for equilibrium constant. There we go. And just know, you could check yourself. If you have a spontaneous delta G, which we do, our K value should be greater than uh, greater than one. So it checks out. And that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, please, if you wouldn't mind, help help us out by spreading the word. Uh, tell your friends, tell your classmates, tell the mailman, tell, tell, you know, your parents, tell your grandparents, tell whoever, your brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, cousins, I don't care. Tell your dog, right? Maybe they need help. <laughs> Dogs are precious and cats, too. Okay. But thank you so much. Thank you for, you know, supporting us and being part of this community. Really do appreciate you guys. Keep studying hard. Let's keep learning. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.